You're listening to the Inquisitive Wren Podcast, the show that brings you philosophical ponderings of your life from a bird's eye view. Now, here's your host, Shah. And Cecile, welcome. Welcome back. Because actually, we did an interview before, but my the app I was using wasn't great. So thank you so much for returning, coming back. Hello. It's great to thank see you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. I so, love talking to you. <laughs> oh, lovely. Well, we've known each other for many years, uh, mm. listeners. So, um, so you've got a lot going on artistically. You're a screenwriter. You've written books. You're an author. Tell us about your latest project. So, yes, I'm also a screenwriter and I've been <laughs> for, for, for many years. And um, this is where that comes from because it's um, now I'm doing a project called The Penis Conundrum, which is a short film, which is meant to be shown to the world. So then we can show, I can show my skills and, you know, like to producers and then make a splash and hopefully um, produce a TV series in Barcelona. So that's, that's the, the, the one set and gist of it. Right. And uh, yeah, so it's a big plan. We have, we are um, teaming with two women, one woman in business and another woman on social media. So that's the trilogy because um, creative people, we never have any money. <laughs> As you know, we're not very good at financing and or anything like that. And as a screenwriter, uh, you're always dependent on on executive in Hollywood, people in business to, you know, agree with your project or not. And these people work usually with algorithms or anything like that. And unless it's IP, an existing IP or an existing book or something like that, they don't, they're a little bit, hmm they're not sure whether they want to spend some time telling me that's too original because then they're risk losing money. You know, it's not a sure thing. So, you know, that's the thing that happened to me during COVID. I was thinking, how can I, as a creator, make sure that my, I get my stories out there without having to beg and wait for people to pick my stories, right? Which is uh, not very empowering, as we all agree. Mm. So I was thinking, okay, so how about I make stories myself I make films but then people usually um, um, will make a short film like I'm doing now but then send it off to festivals and then wait a year and get a few laurels and then they're back to square one maybe they have a poster with a few laurels but quite frankly it doesn't really get anywhere in general unless you get to the big ones but even then you probably knew people before it's a, it's quite complicated uh, yes yeah, so it's, it's just you know when we talk about indie, indie films it's often people you know have had a little bit of um, it's not as as just someone comes up and you know they're, they're successful it's a bit more complicated than this so anyway i was thinking how about something to do quicker we to make a big splash that's no one's done before i had this idea of doing this this film that you could not forget it's a title you cannot forget for sure called the penis conundrum and about female sexuality i think it's a comedy how you know about how women feel shame about sex or how we react to that you know sexual thing as from a female perspective but through the eyes or lens of comedy and so it's a story of a woman who's a little bit strict and uh, she freaks out when she sees the outline of a colleague's penis through trousers so this starts with this and then we move on to I uh, you know, fear, shame, stories about that, and but also, but overall, it's mainly a comedy. So it makes you think, but it will overall make you laugh. So that's the idea. And the idea is to involve an influencer who's going to be the penis man. <laughs> so it's going to be the, the not an actor, in it, but it's going to be present, let's just say. And um, we're going to release a YouTube live um, and then try to get a million views. So that's making the big splash. And um, <clears throat> so that's the thing. And then after that, we want to create a production company by the end of the year and raise funds for uh, to make a TV series in Barcelona. Wow. So that's the thing. So um, uh, to do this, I like I said, women in creative women, we're not very good with money. So I, you know, I need money to do all this, of course. You know, I can't do it. Uh, or I could do it really cheaply. But then, you know, who, who would want to watch something that looks cheap and not interesting? So... I teamed up with a woman in business because I would think women in business know about money. They understand how it works. So I found a lovely lady called Gloria who's um, had years of experience raising funds and for startups. Uh, so in the startup world, so, uh, she knows angels, investors. So angel investors are women who help, you know, businesses. And, um, and then so initially we're going maybe to, and then so how you raise money 
for investment is to usually do it in December, January, um, because it's when companies get rid of their money. So then for tax purposes and also to invest. So those two. We couldn't do it last year because we haven't created the company yet. And so the idea is to this time around to do crowdfunding, which we're doing now, which I'll come back to, to it later mm -hmm. for people, our audience, but also later approach uh, those angel investors as donors to start with to fund our little story and they can see whether we succeed, you know, like with the 1 million views or yeah. more to gain a public, because that's the thing. My idea was like, we need to gain an audience. Show sure. people that, you know, before we start anything, that we have an audience, we have everything. So they can see that we're doing well. So by the end of the year, we create a production company and then they invest in a larger project. Okay. And, and then the mixing of the social media is for Mina. So it's my second collaborator who, is going to help me create fun content, inspiring content on social media to gain that audience and inspire women because especially women, not just women and dreamers. Our dream is um, we do, we inspire our sisters and all dreamers. That's what we do. Oh, and spread, spread positivity in the world. So that's, that's the idea. And uh, we're starting actually next Monday to do the TPC Monday. So short videos, short funny videos every Monday to brighten up your day. And they all they're all aubergine themed because our mascot or our logo is an aubergine. So it's going to be our, the adventures of, uh, of our aubergine. <laughs> okay. Well, let, let's tell the, that's amazing. So let's start, let's go back just a little bit. Cause that was a lot of to, information for, for, yes. for, for our listeners to take in, but there was some gems in there. So new project out is called the penis conundrum. It is a short film. Correct. It's a comedy. Exactly. So who wrote it? I did. Exactly. <laughs> I knew that. But I, you wanted to know it? who did it. Yes, I'm I helping wanted, someone else. Who wrote it? <laughs> you did. Who directed? So direct, we, we filmed a teaser for it for the crowdfunding campaign, a no budget one. I will direct the longer version. So, so, so you know. So you Perfect. Know. Now. Who's starring in it? Do we know yet? The influencer, we're still talking about it, but the two main actors, so because there are three characters, so we have the Peter's guy who when you're appearing, like I said, is <laughs> and then we have uh, Laura, who's the lady in the story, and her boyfriend, Nick. And we have a lovely, those two actors are really, really talented actor, actors here in, in Barcelona, and um, I'm so glad to have them here with us. That's fantastic. Um, yeah. Is um so who's the protagonist? Laura, the lady. Kind of, okay. It's okay. about the lady, it's not about the penis well, guy. You know, <laughs> I, I, some people might think, you know, because you know what it's like, it's called the penis conundrum. So some people might think, oh, the penis is the protagonist. The star. Right. The penis is the star, right? Because you can't take her eyes off, which we want to I wanna now talk to you about how the idea came about for yeah. the premise of the the film so how did that come about and that's interesting you're asking me this because it goes with the whole project about the female perspective and everything else because it was based on the day i had where sex was on my mind and uh, thinking yay! about yeah yeah, yeah i guess so yeah uh, absolutely it yeah, you're yeah. healthy and you're yeah, yeah, correct and it was really present let's just say and um I was thinking, oh, this is funny because I'm not sharing this with anyone. And women will not share that a day like this with other women either. And then I think it's interesting. And it made me think about how we react. So the setting of a workplace environment where you have to behave, you have to be professional. And those feelings colliding was an interesting concept to me. So, um, so and also I felt that we do see, see like comedies about snakes and stuff and funny and maybe about penises, say, so, but it's often from the male perspective. This is really something that, and every single woman I've talked to about this particular situation and her reaction, which you can see in the teaser is, oh, I know what you mean. Oh, that's happened to me. Right. You know, I've, I've felt that. So it's, it's, um, so I think it's interesting for men as well to see, you know, oh, okay, this is, what goes on in the ladies' mind as well. So I think it's, um, and it's original, obviously, because obviously I, have, I haven't seen that. It's your story. Yeah, it's mm. your story as well. Even if it was before, it's your story, yeah, which makes it original. Mm. Absolutely. So you you got this idea, You were sex was on the mind, and you thought, ah, what was the next thought? 
And the next thought is, like, how about if it happened during a meeting at work, you know? And I was just like, and I'm not saying it happened in real life. <laughs> Right. But 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 I'm not, um but it, yeah, and I was thinking, and how also because there are two scenes: one's in the office, so that's the whole thing that happens, and then one she's at home with the boyfriend. Oh. Because well, there's two sides of female sexuality: the ones that public, or how do you behave in public when you have those feelings, and also at home, do you dare talk about your true feelings or what you really want in bed, for example, or anything like that? Right. So those are the two that we examine with this. And I think for me, that was interesting because that, these are the two sides of female sexuality that, you know, create issues, I think, yes. sometimes or, or certainly could be a sore point for many of us. You know. Absolutely. I mean, yes. And, and, you know, my work in therapy, we do see that a lot, that people are unable to express their needs mm -hmm. and also their wants. What would you like to happen? What do you yeah. want to happen? And I'll just quickly say too, when I started my hypnotherapy practice, I used to see a lot of men for impotence mm. and also premature ejaculation. Yeah, those two, yeah. And hypnotherapy, yeah, absolutely. Hypnoth uh, yeah, and hypnotherapy can help with that. So it, they're, they're real things that happen and what people were learning and what I learned too is that it's all about the mind, what's going on in your mind. Now, for some people, they experienced, unfortunately, some difficult mm. uh, instances and things that happened in childhood that affected them for the rest of their life. So that can happen. But what I found in my practice was that wasn't always the case. Sometimes people have seen something, you know, uh, even in adult life or some people have, uh, we have found as well, religious issues that have stepped in and affected the way people approach sex or the, their ideas about sex or even roles, yeah. woman, the man and all that. So it's very interesting. Yeah, um, how, how you're going to be perceived as well if you want certain things, for example, you know. That's it, exactly. So without telling us, because obviously we want everybody to go to see this, you know, it's at its early stages, it's in its infancy, but we want to build up, you know, I'm totally behind this project and I really want to see it to come to fruition. So without telling us everything... Uh, what happens? What's the premise and what kind of formulates from there without telling us the ending? And Like I said, there's those two, how she deals with it in the office and then perhaps going home, what happens? So with her husband. So I, I can't tell more because there's a segue to okay. one of the other. So okay. I, 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 okay. I won't say more because... Um, these are very two different scenes, and I think that's why they are interested, interesting. Well, that's um, even a different way to, to mm. film. So this yeah. is fantastic. This yeah. is a new way to look at things. Mm. I mean, we do, we've had... They're connected, but it's... That's it. Yeah. Yeah, they're connected, but, but yeah. So, but it's, it's, it's just see two, the two sides of that lady. Never miss a show by clicking the subscribe button right now. Thank you for your support. You make this podcast possible. Now, back to the show. <clears throat> Excellent. I would imagine that you've had some interesting feedback from women and men. So would you mind telling us a little bit about the feedback from women? But women, oh, I know exactly what you mean. Oh, it's hilarious. Every single, it's funny because I've put the teaser this week on Twitter and then Instagram and stuff, and women were like, I was having my breakfast. I, sp I, sp I spit my breakfast everywhere. I didn't expect this. It's hilarious. And I had a, I said it to a lady uh, who is a famous creator in Hollywood. I said, what do you think? She's clearly in comedy. She said, oh, it's hilarious. You got a winner there. So I was like, okay, made me feel good. But from the ladies, I haven't had one bad, you know, it's been absolutely great. The ladies love it because they, they know what it means. Oh, it's happened to me, you know? And I'm like, yes, of course. Or, yeah. you know exactly but i felt like women felt very much um this is a space for them i think it's the type of humor and this type of experience that they can yeah. relate to without feeling like it's aggressive to them you yeah. know like or yeah. abrasive this is not abrasive to women let's just say absolutely and you know funnily enough and people will be surprised at this all my friends tell me they're shocked 
When you talk about this, what comes to mind for me is everybody's hoopla about sex in the city. Mm-hmm. I never saw that series, funnily Ooh. enough. I never saw it. It's very good. <laughs> Everybody's shocked, but I never saw it. And I can't remember why I never saw it. Um, but I, I, I think I was busy. I think, funnily enough, I think I was at uni at the time. But anyway, mm. I never saw it. But what I do know about it is mm-hmm. that there was a lot of sexual talk and there was women's yeah. lib. Because I, I keep hearing about some characters on there who were very liberal with yeah. their sexuality. Well, right? there is there is one character who's very oh, okay. free. And I think, uh, actually, she's almost like a fantasy woman, Samantha, as she's called, because... I think I wonder if she was even based on a gay man. I wonder because she, I mean they said from the, from the freedom because the the, the creator is gay, right. and I was wondering if she was that oh. sort of composite of a gay man and but also women, the woman who's fearless. She's not us, but she's yeah. something we would love to be. I think Samantha is like complete freedom. I don't care. I sleep with it, whoever I want. I, 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 I don't care. I'm not worrying if I don't worry if a guy doesn't call me back. You know, all of that. And let's let's be honest. Those are all the things that hold us back. You know, I, mean, I was thinking to a friend how many times in my youth I spent like worrying about if a guy was going to call me or not call me and stuff like that. And yeah. Samantha, she doesn't care. Oh. Enjoy yourself. She enjoys herself. She enjoys sex, and she's got no shame. And she's just has fun. So she's almost like a sort of this character. I mean, I think she is to us what James Bond is for some men, you know, like James Bond is the guy who just like sleeps with all these women and it's just like he's a spy, he's free, he's single, you know what I mean? And I think Samantha was a little bit like that for us. It's like, you know, she, she said that she's beautiful, she doesn't care, she's got her friends, she's free, she doesn't care about men, but she has them all the time, you know, she doesn't care. And I think. There's a part of, I mean, certainly for me, there's a part of me that would love to be that free. I mean, I wouldn't be like Samantha, but that freedom is is is, is quite nice, I think. Mm, okay. That, oh, that's interesting. I'm learning stuff. Okay. Um, so, well, maybe this is your freedom, expressing yourself through your art, because mm. that's what you, you do. Mm. As a screenwriter as well, is it difficult to cultivate, you know, your ideas, those feelings, those thoughts, and kind of formulate them in a way that you put out to the world? Is that hard to do? You know, some people struggle with writing them down, but you're actually formulating uh, as a screenwriter where you've got to display it on screen. It depends. Like for me, it's very strange. I have some ideas that I have for a very long time and I never write one word about it or maybe three words or a sentence or something. But every day it percolates in my head and then I just, it stays in there and it grows and grows. I know, I mean, I'm sure it's bad for some people, but for me, it really works. And then until the day I'm, I'm ready and then I just put it on paper. So it, some yeah. stories I start before, but so with this, you know, I, with this actually was quite, quick actually I had it in my head and I just wrote it all down but for some more complex stories it takes it may take a little while so um, I like it. it's it's like a German it's in my in my head and stuff but however I mean the reality of writing and particularly screenwriting is that whatever you write first is not going to be the end product so you would write the story I mean you would usually outline uh, most of us would outline the story and then you would write the story and then okay so let's say if it's a comedy where is the, is there enough comedy so you would revise the comedy I aspect right. um then the characters do they make any sense you know is there okay or you, you know i mean you just right. um, so you yeah. do a few passes and then you tidy and then also uh, something that all screenwriters do and should do anyway if they don't is um send them to your drafts uh, the first draft or second draft to their peers and uh, to make sure to to get notes on it mm-hmm. before sending it out there because it's never ready you know mm-hmm. you, so so it's something that we all do and we find uh, trusted readers which right. are just peers okay. of us and um and we help them in return of course you know and uh the screenwriting community is actually very generous for this. So it's a very nice. I think there are lots of uh, lovely groups. Um, I'm part of a, a UK group called Scribe Lounge, and it's super, super helpful. Um, but also online, I've got uh, people from all over who are also super helpful. So it's a very nice community. Mm, it sounds like it. 
you are very active on social media as well. So I know that you connect with a lot of people in your peer group. Yes, um, So, you know, I, I, we mentioned I, before in our first interview, I don't know if it made the cut, <laughs> but um, <laughs> we talked a little bit about uh, Freud's idea about, you know, the whole penis envy and all that stuff, yeah. uh, which is going to bring me a little bit to your feedback from men. But one thing Freud believed was that women uh, had penis envy and mm -hmm. the only way to get rid of it was to actually birth a male. Mm -hmm. It sounds archaic and, <laughs> and it, there was pushback, of course, mm -hmm. it is for most of his work. Yeah. Um, and one female psychologist said, I don't think so. <laughs> and he said, that's because you've got penis envy. <laughs> so he turned it on to her, you know, which I found really funny. So I just wonder if you've had feedback from men. Now, guys out there, do, I'm going to try my best not to analyze it because I'm an analyst. <laughs> but I'm interested to see what men, because we're talking about a part of their anatomy, Correct. a very important part of their anatomy. In fact, for some of them, they lead with this part <laughs> of their anatomy. Yeah, so, so what, what's been the feedback from men? Do you mind telling us a little bit? I've had a lot of supportive men for this project. So, you know, overall, I would say it's very supportive. However, um, and it's funny because it's something I felt from the beginning that do I choose a story like this as my main big story? Because I'm aware that sex is a, could be sex and how women treat with it, how they viewed, you know, like that could be a thing. So I knew going in, going in that it could potentially be an issue. Overall, it's been really positive. However, I've had a little bit of pushback as well. And um, even recently where I was invited somewhere and I won't say any the details of that. And, but I was explaining my project and was with collaboration, what we were going to do. And all of a sudden I was told, well, if you want to be labeled the penis girl, it's up to you. And I was like, where did that come from? You know, because I never asked for, first of all, uh, for that person's advice. And secondly, it was really like a cut, cutting me off in my sort of like explanation of that. Um, the other thing, so that's happened once. And another one where I could feel a friend of mine was just not taking me so seriously after this. I could feel it. he never said anything. And then the second one was like a male commenting about my description of the of the uh, project being about normalizing uh, female sexuality, and he said, "I don't like that word. That word, I'm uncomfortable with that word." Which word? So, normalizing the so female sexuality, and he said, I, "You should take it out." So commenting comments like that on my work that critical that women, not a single woman, have said to me. Everyone's like, oh, it's a project you're doing about sexuality, but it's a comedy. I think every, all, every, most people will get the idea that it's just a comedy. The subject happens to be sexuality. You know what I mean? But some people, the penis is like, you know, the woman is like the prostitute, the virgin, or the sex crazed person. So be careful because now you're going to be labeled the sex crazed person. But obviously what they mean is that I will be thinking of you as a sex crazed person. But um, so I, I didn't make a scene, but I just said, I disagree with this laboring. I don't think this, this is the case at all. And I moved on. So that's, that was, that's how I dealt with it. But it, it made me a little bit upset because I just think, wow, is this 2022 and it was still having this type of pushback because imagine the way, because some people say, well, it's normal. They, they said that. Maybe someone here listening will be thinking that. But I'm going to, I will say to them, how about if I made a, a, a short film about cooks or psychopath even, or anything like that? Would you say, is she the psychopath girl? Or is she the cook girl, the cook girl or whatever? Do you know what I mean? And, and it's funny because I think, how about if it was a rom-com? Oh, yes, then I could probably be labeled a rom-com girl because I'm not serious, because I make rom-coms. So I think that you can see a pattern about sexuality, women's things, or women's issues. That's another one that's a dirty word, you know, anything like that. So, so I think uh, many women have a lot of fear with that. I think, I mean, I started my career writing stuff that other men could write, thriller, sci-fi, that kind of thing. 
And I remember thinking well back when a guy read my script and said, oh, I would have never guessed it was written by a woman and feeling so much pride of that. And this is the day I started to think, why do I feel proud that people don't think I'm a woman wrote this, that I could be like a man? Why am I so proud, uh, so proud of that? And that started this whole uh, thinking about, you know, and I guess this is the combination. I didn't, I choose this story because I just wanted to, mm -hmm. that nothing, not to provoke anything or, you know, it's not an issue, but because I, I thought it was funny and everything else. But now I realized that by, you know, doing this project, I'm also carrying with it um, something that I hope, because I know it's going to be successful. And I think it would be nice to see to people, so I might call the penis girl and I'm successful. No, I won't be, of course not. So it's also to encourage women to go, I, do you fear, you know, telling certain stories because of the way you're going to be perceived? Please do not. So I'm, I'm hoping this wasn't meant to, to be this, but it will be now this as well for me to just go, all the way and just tell everyone and women in particular, you can do this. It doesn't matter. Do what, you know, feels right for you, right, create anything you want. Yes. So what the first guy missed was that you're a screenwriter. <laughs> this is si simply put, you bring stories to life. Mm -hmm. That's it. Whether it be about a penis, an apple, an orange, a cat, you know, the street, a, a lamp, you bring stories to life. Correct. So, but, you know, one thing would have struck with him, and that's the penis, because he, yeah. he specific his language, we have to listen to language. You know, for, for me, one of the first things I asked you in our first interview was, why is it a conundrum? So yeah. why didn't he focus on conundrum instead yeah. of penis? You know, I you don't see a lot of films with the word conundrum in them and mm. also the concept of it as well. So that's good and unique and different and artistic. But for him, it was about the penis girl. Oh, <laughs> and you're going to be labeled oh. as a penis. Oh, I'd love to have him in a session in a therapy. I, I wonder oh. what's gone on for him. But anyway. Yeah, it's interesting to me as well. I would have one. It wasn't a time and place. It was a, a, something Absolutely. about films. And you did it very well. I think so, because I need to say something, but not make a big deal of it. Absolutely. So I think I addressed it, but I moved on. But uh, yeah, yes. yeah. And you were right, absolutely, to move on. And, you know, the other two, well, that was just a bit, um, yeah. uh, who knows? Who knows what's going on for them? Yeah. You know, when it's people you know and things, there's a lot going on there. Mm -hmm. I mean, you are, pro pro you know, progressing. You are being proactive and active. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just, uh, but uh, yeah. but it's funny because when the comments about the, taking the word out, my yeah. husband was commenting, going like, it's always guys who make comments like this. <laughs> it is to normalize because why? Yeah. Right, does that mean that, women's sexuality is not normal or is that what you're saying I, you know I don't understand what the problem is with it being normal mm. what well, what's the all I I would have loved to have out or known yeah. asked so what would be an alternative word for normal mm. for, for, from you yeah. I mean what's the alternative yeah, it's, and it's that's the word you chose. And it's the word you chose because it wasn't, I don't think, that controversial, to be honest. I was like it thinking isn't. it's pretty innocuous, I felt, you know, of all the things I wrote about the description. So it's interesting. I mean, you're right. It's, it's I think um, for many of us, um, the internalized sexism we have, and that includes women, actually, you know, that's unfortunately. It. Yeah. Um, uh, and yeah, and men. men, men and men, men. We, 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 yeah, men and women, but also women, and because we all assume, yeah. assume men feel it and we don't but it's not the case unfortunately but um so it'd be interesting to see which part of the up is upbringing the society that made yes. him, that triggered this for him but i think a lot of those things like this, the guy who you know when i had this question about the penis girl this guy is a very nice guy you know a reasonable guy so it's funny that how you know he, he's not a horrible guy who was horrible to me and then called me the penis girl it's just um yeah, an average guy who's, you know, yeah. doing a thing. And then, you know, this, ha you know, popped into his head and we don't know where that comes from. You know, well, look, you struck a chord with him. Exactly. For, for whatever that's reason. Yeah, yeah. And, and he can sit with that. 
Yeah, exactly. That was, uh, that's what I'm hoping because by saying I disagree with yes. that, hopefully that, that would trigger something in here. Or even he probably felt a bit, because sometimes we say something and say, oh, why? I mean, I've, I've had that. You know, like yeah. when I've said something, you're like, where did that come from? Right. Why, why was I angry? Right. You know, sometimes, what yeah. was I angry about this? Yeah. Because you're like, oh, what, what did I, what was I snappy? Or what did I do mm-hmm. this? Sometimes mm-hmm. we wonder. So hopefully he will have this thing there. Uh, I think one thing's for sure, all three of them will be watching that film. So that's what we want in the end. They've got to see it now. Yeah. Of and you, so you've done it now. You've, this is so good. You know, I was saying to you one day as well, we were talking about something that people are, you know, we're talking about mind, body, spirit, yeah. mind, body, soul connection. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that um, a lot of people think they're not connected, mind, body, soul. And I was saying to you, people think that, obviously haven't had a, a sexual thought <laughs> because yeah. all you have to do is have a sexual thought and you will see your body react. Correct. So, yeah. <laughs> yes. Right. So the mind body does connect, you know, I've had, you know, some of the work we've done on um, premature ejaculation involved the yeah. mind body thing and controlling the mind and helping to control the body they do yeah. work very much together and simply put even if you think about maybe food you may not be hungry but then your stomach may growl so yeah. and if somebody starts shivering say oh it's so cold in here you hadn't maybe thought it was, but then all but then it, you're like, oh, it's chilly. Yes, correct. Right. Yes. So, so mind, the mind and body work work very strongly together. But I think you're on to something here. I absolutely love the trailer. So we we'll move on to the trailer. Love it. Um, <laughs> what were your thoughts? <laughs> because what the reason I'm laughing is what's in my mind is the the actual print. Yeah. of the penis yeah. and you in the in the trailer you've made it so prominent <laughs> i had to because you may wonder why is she looking at this so, you know it's that's hilarious. so disturbing and obviously uh, uh you know obviously for the actor this is not Funny. the real you know this is fake i just want to say that we yeah and it's a comedy <laughs> people it's a comedy yeah, it's a comedy so i just want to say this uh, also very important because people may wonder it's pg-13 there's no nudity yes. there's nothing like that so i just want to say that the whole you know I, I, I kept thinking that a friend of mine had these four children with him. He said, can I watch a trailer with children? I said, I don't think they're going to see it. Because you know how children would not see the outline exactly. or anything. So I said, you know, so even you could, although I would, you know, probably, because they'd, they'd probably be like the children, what are you laughing at? Right. Or they might see, oh, this guy's got funny hair, but, right. you know, they would not guess it. But what I mean, what I mean by that is, is we would know. There's a lot of innuendos that way, but it, it's, it's no nudity. It's nothing like that, you know. It yeah. really is a comedy. That's a good point to make mm-hmm. as well. And mm-hmm. on the trailer, it's all outlined that it's PG-13. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, listeners, you don't have to worry about any of that. And yeah. also, it is a comedy. It is, so, yes. <laughs> it is a comedy. But, you know, if you guys can watch religiously mm-hmm. Sex in the City and all these other, even James Bond, all that stuff, then surely, yeah. surely this yeah. uh, can't be anything out to the norm no. <laughs> as it's, such exactly yeah i think women's sexual sexuality is important to look at um yeah. because it is how you feel if you're a healthy woman then you will have certain needs and wants as well needs wants totally separate um and the fact that you're bringing it to the fore mm. in in a i'm sorry i'm gonna have to use the guy's word normalized way yeah because it is normal yeah absolutely to see that the way that perhaps breasts for some men uh you know they yeah, have this reaction absolutely yeah it's true but i've never seen women think about this like oh, we've never you know picture women doing that like we've seen men like looking at boobs and then going yeah. oh boobs boobs right. but but we've seen that tons of time but this is something else and i think that's perhaps what's shocking to some men perhaps hmm. that because it's new a new concept oh you mean you're looking at this oh my god i'm freaking out now <laughs> But uh, yeah, who knows? It's interesting. I think I'm, I, that's why I'm really glad that I've done this because yeah. it, it was this crazy idea. Do I, do I not? 
And I thought about it for a while, and I'm so glad because it's bringing up so many interesting yes. questions. Yeah, you're creating a dialogue that needs yeah. to be had as well. So mm. have you had, I mean, I know that you've um, I sort of spoke, you're working with three or two different people on this. Have you got other projects in the works as well? Okay, so like I said, the plan is like to do a TV series uh, at the end of the year. So I've written the TV pilot for it this with some people at the moment. We are trying to, I'm trying to get into a sort of type of um, fellowships to do go through development and everything else. So I'm hoping I'm going to get there or another way to be able by the end of it to show, okay, we've well, done this business conundrum and I have this TV pilot that people are really liking and I know a few production companies. So then by the time we have the audience, the financing and the production company and these great TV pilots, uh, it's going to be set in Barcelona. I don't want to say too much about yeah, that because... Course. Because, well, for, for various reasons, and because it's, but it's, it's not going to be about sex. So I just want to say um, it's going to be more of a mystery thing and, and a bit of comedy in there. It's going to be something about community, intergenerational relationship, and a lot of fun as well. Oh, wow. And I think it's, again, it, because it's a pattern of mine, I think to be have fun, uh, comedy, but also tackle, you know, something. I think the community side of it, I think we all disconnected. We had COVID. Now there's a war going on. I think there's a lot, people are feeling, I don't disconnect more than ever. I think we have probably were feeling that way before, but I think now we probably do more, you know. Yeah. So I think it's a way to bring us back together and do something that, you know, you watch it, you're laughing, you're, you're, you're in Barcelona, you know, it takes your mind somewhere else. And then on top of that, you feel good, you know, about having, you know, having watched it, you know, it's the end of the week and you've watched that, that TV show and you're like, oh, yeah, and I brought a smile to my face and a little bit of hope about the world. So I think this is what the kind of energy I wanted to put there. It's very much me. I think I waited too long to do this. Um, like I said, I felt before like I need to be more like sci-fi, drama, thriller. I almost say you need to do this. This is what sells. Comedy doesn't travel. Um, you know, all these things. And I actually, this is wrong. I don't think it's true. I mean, it's true for some comedies. Uh, you know, if you do something pretty, perhaps too re regional, you know, to do with po local politics, then, you know, of course, that's not going to travel well. But in general, there are so many traits that are universal that we can apply to any type of comedy. And I think, I think this, yeah, because I, I send my script up to follow screenwriters and like, oh, it's been ages. I don't remember what like, reading something that's funny and light and exciting. I'm like, what a shame. So is that all we, the content we put out there is all dark and you can see it is dark, dark, dark. Oh, yes. yeah. And you're like, okay. So I think also that's going to be nice to show people that we can, it would be nice to bring something, a bit positivity mm. to the world. I think it would be nice. And I think it's more me as well. So I'm really glad that I've come out as a positive and happy and <laughs> funny person. <laughs> Well, that is you, though. That yes. is who you are. I know. So that's who you are. That's what I've always experienced with mm. you anyway. But you, you've you always had the capacity to listen. And also, you feel what people feel. So if I've ever expressed something to you or told you any, a mm. problem, and I have in the past, mm. you've been very gracious, very listening. You've offered advice. So I'm not surprised that you're doing a lot of this you'll be putting more out into the world so i cannot wait to see it as well if you'd like to be a guest on the show email me at inquire at the inquisitive ring.com that's e-n-q-u-i-r-e at the inquisitive ring.com be sure to check all social media especially the facebook page for new topics and new interests and if you're an expert in the field, I'd love to hear from you. Or if you'd just like to have a chat, contact me. Let's get you on the show. Now, let's get back to the show. And meanwhile, how can people, if people want to contribute, if they want to support the project, what should they do? Two things, uh, social media is a big part of it. So even if you don't have a penny to your name, <laughs> like, you can follow us on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter, whichever you want, all three, up to you. Um, and hopefully you will join all our your videos. And uh, But 
what we actually mostly need, need at the moment is to to make this this the short film. Right. So we are uh, at the moment we la- we've launched our crowdfunding campaign. Uh, we're offering some perks, so, so you can just back the. St- the, the st- the, the products if you want to but the other thing is we've tried to make some fun perks so if you're in a screenwriter or a budding filmmaker or just trying to make your films we have a series of uh, indie filmmaking masterclass with the people who actually work and live in Hollywood's mentors we don't usually do classes but because I know them they've uh, accepted to do these classes for me for the crowdfunding campaign so we have a series of six max master classes I can purchase separately or as a uh, obviously cheaper as a set of of seven um, we have sales agents distribution career strategy uh, we have a lawyer there who talks about copyright and IP pitching uh, how to make a behind the scene uh, scenes video from a documentary filmmaker um, uh, uh, we have also a, a master class with a British influencer about the social media size because he, he's an um, influencer and filmmaker and he has all his audiences on social media and, you know, these are the things that I'm offering for people who are interested in that sort of specific. For people in business and women in particular, well, but men as well, and um, we have a, a lady who's doing how to do a promo video. So if it's your business, they show you, this, you know, how to make a, a promo video. So the basics of that. And then the last one, if you ever, ever want to visit Barcelona, we have the ultimate, ultimate Barcelona tourist guide made by us, by locals. And with some of our favorite places, when to come, the stuff to try, where to stay, even on the shoestring. And this one is cost us a little bit because some of those places we may not want to share with people. But, you know, Ooh. for you, we, can, we will. For this project, we will. And so, yeah, so we try to offer something that's of value to people as well. So, yeah. you know, just... Um, yeah, we thought long and hard for the purpose. Yes, and they're all listed because I had a look today, and it's under what's it called? Indigo or in the I- Indiegogo? Indiegogo. That's it. I had a look earlier today, uh, and it's all on there. You can choose each one to support. Yeah. Um, and that's a way to fund the project to help it just yeah, keep start, going. Yeah, that's correct. I mean, this is like to start the project. Mm-hmm. And after that, we hopefully we'll find the funds. Um, yeah, just uh, in Indiegogo, it's a bit confusing. I just say like, if you just want to give like a sum of money, particularly just put back it back it's you know because it's not very clear i think so i got a bit confused so just in case people yeah, just don't want to purchase one of the perks yes. we just want to back it to get yeah. so that's just a, a comment on that that's helpful though to know mm. because some people may not want any of those things but they want to back you correct so yeah. like i would <laughs> so you know they want to back you and that's mm. brilliant but some of those perks are amazing so you know a lot of people will be interested yeah, because what we found, uh, um, I don't know if you're familiar with people trying to raise money for short yeah. films or films, yeah. it's usually pretty boring, we yes. felt. Yeah. So the videos, there's this guy talking about two, three minutes about himself. So we tried to make the video funny as well, and it's mm. a minute and a bit, that's it, and the teaser, but also... Um, you know, provide not the perks are usually stuff like oh, a signed t shirt, or you can, we do have t shirts, or a signed poster, or something like this. And you know, people might not really care about stuff like that, so you know, because it's your project, they might not want. So, I think you know, we, we'll try also to track people who may not be interested in the project, perhaps, but would love to have the, the master classes. So, do you know what I mean? So, so I, I, I probably expect that some people will back us, even though we but by purchasing, purchasing the yes. master classes, but not realizing that you know, that necessarily backing the project. So, yeah. um, it's an opportunity, we're trying to make it a, a, an opportunity for people as well because. It's fair enough, you know, it's people's money and I understand what that means. So I appreciate that. So either way, I wanted to, you know, make sure. So we've put a lot of hard work into this and making the connections. Yeah, you can tell. And as you say as well, you can still back without spending a penny uh, by following on social media. That's correct. Follow on TikTok because you've just set that up, I think, the TikTok. Yeah, we've just set it up and we put one or two videos. And every Monday on all social medias, we're going to do the TPC Mondays about the adventures of uh, our aubergine friends. (laughs) <laughs> basically because he's our mascot so we i was thinking how about i was thinking to Romy, who was the uh a social media person how, how do we how about we take it around barcelona we have some stories with it 
And then, and I'll tell you, we have tons of stories in our heads for wow. Wow. Virginia. And, it's, and, it, and I brought it to networking events this week, actually. And it was a great conversation starter because who brings an aubergine to a networking event? Not many people. So <laughs> as you can imagine, so I, I was looking around and then I had great reaction. People thought it was pretty funny. And even I, when I was like putting the phone and walking with the aubergine and I was laughing my head off because I think this is so ridiculous. This is so funny. So, um, and I put little funny things on there on my stories, like, uh, oh, we just hired an actor, which is the aubergine. And I put, oh, 80, 82 cents, you know, very cheap. So, you know, <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it's just little things like that. I actually found that, like, you know, just the humor. And you want to take, like, he's, he's, it's, um, it's, um, life, what, what it's all thoughts, his thoughts are and stuff like that. So behind the scenes, I think we, we're going to have so much fun with this. And, uh, we, we, it. we, so we're going to do that, but also, you know, some interesting content. For example, yesterday we brought the aubergine to a networking event for women. We'll talk about stuff. And then, um, you so we, we the also, aubergine. <laughs> yeah, yes, but it was just, uh, yeah, it was nice. So, um, yeah, people will see if they say that, but it will be, uh, an interesting, uh, account follower thing even if you're not backing us financially yes because these days social media does mean something um mm. you know no matter how we try and cut it it does we're not in the 80s we're not no. in the 90s anymore <laughs> you know it all happens thank goodness it wasn't anyway um no. <laughs> no. social media but back it, then but <laughs> yeah i think we're lucky that we didn't do that uh, yeah. to start with yeah exactly uh yes so also i wanted to ask you about um outside of the screenwriting are you are you writing books because you you i wrote only one book and yes. uh that was you pull me in it's on that's amazon correct, correct. Mm. um but um this is it for me yeah, for now okay uh, i'm uh, really like i told you before this i was yeah. i'm really i have a lot of work on I can and imagine. i really yeah this project is huge and we are we are I, that's why when i explain to it it's like at least two or three minutes to explain to people this whole year of yeah. planning everything yeah. so we focus on this however i don't think i think that could still write again because thinking about my experiencing my experiences because this way of me doing filmmaking no one else is doing it at the moment mm. or so it will be interesting a, when we succeed <laughs> to maybe perhaps influence people because uh, inspire people because mm. the issue now is like the film uh, the creative market is very stuck stuck in franchises mm. stuck in everything else people can't get money to make their own things and we're not getting original content or not very very few so um i think it would be a way to break this cycle and break this format and do it you know the creator is in charge mm. so i wonder if netflix came knocking yeah would you entertain the idea that's an interest, interesting one. So I don't know if you knew this, but um, with Netflix, obviously Netflix, everyone wants to do Netflix and everything else. But Netflix is run by corporate people. And, That's um, why I'm asking the question, yeah. Because, well, I, it's funny because I, I, uh, a few things that I've noticed with Netflix. Uh, the first one is um, it, I use Netflix. So hold on a minute. I'm going to put it out there like everyone else. I use Netflix. But um, I watched a, um, there was a, a talk with the, one of their big corporate guys, executive guys, uh, who was, who makes decisions, you know, mm -hmm. who, who they, you know. And he was a really cool guy, you know, like it's just, you know, whatever, he had his bike at the back, at the back, and he looked like, oh, he, he talked about like, oh, this is what you need to present, characters, blah, blah. I said, oh, this is actually quite a creative person. So it was quite interesting. And after like a while, he goes, so the way we, we work here, you know, we have algorithms and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, and then he lost me completely because I realized this, this is a company. This is a corporation and they work like that. And he was talking as well. The other thing that made me smile, he talked about how this um, small Turkish TV series was doing really well. And he was like, our, our algorithm didn't pick up on that. We didn't expect it. So it's like this, this sort of like... Uh, sort of running towards like finding what the algorithms can find everything about what people want but i don't think it's possible and i think 
But this is, I think, but this is just Netflix thinking like that. Yeah. It's not just them. They all do. And that's the issue. And, and, and then the other issue with Netflix is that um, for two ways you can sell to Netflix. The first one is you don't have any money. You come to them and you go, well, I've got this TV series. And uh, please, please, please buy my TV series. I'm desperate. I need money. And, you know, you guys can find me. And they say, yes, we love your TV series. But now we have all the rights. So now you become an employee of Netflix. So I'll give you an example of like uh, this very famous TV series, uh, Spanish one called Money Heist, the Casa de Papel, who did incredibly well, very original. And the guy intended to have only two series. That was his idea. I have got to have two series, first part, second part, and that's it. You know, that's as far as it. But Netflix, because it was such a huge success, I think it was the... Uh, most watched uh, internet friend, foreign uh, TV series of uh, whatever. Anyway, so they said, no, I'm going to have five or four or something. I don't know. And the thing is, we, after the second one, we felt like, oh, it's a bit similar. It's a bit. And so that guy had to go on because he signed a contract with Netflix. So, so it's, it's, can you imagine? So that, that's the issue. And then the other way you can sell to Netflix, and then it's different that you've met maybe your TV series or your film, and then you sell it to them. So then they pay you a price and then they have no executive uh, you know, decision to make because it's already packaged and made. So they either say yes or no. So that's a more powerful way to do it. But obviously you already have to have, to have the money to make it and everything else. So these are the two ways you can sell to Netflix. And this is, goes back to my thing about the being independent yes. and having the money. And, and the, if you look for money from the... Um, creative corporations like that, this is how it's going to be. However, if you go to the business world, you have more of a chance because they're used to taking risks. So you may, it, like we're selling a concept at the moment with us. We're selling the concept of having, mixing business with creativity, social media. We're, it's a new concept. So a company, because it's like we are like a startup, if you will. Mm-hmm. So a company, when it, they usually invest in startup, they know that one out of five startups that they invest in is going to be successful. Mm-hmm. So they know that off the bat. So you have more of a chance perhaps to inspire or do you know what I mean? If you can have great business of uh, acumen and plan, whereas with executives, it's much more like, okay, the, the, so the plan is, okay, is it an IP, existing IP? Yeah. Is it something like this? So then you see the difference is like, it's, so I think my, my idea, I think this is a future of filmmaking for, for creators mm. in terms of freedom, mm. if not, of having freedom. So we'll see if, you know, this is a, this is a big experiment what I'm doing at the moment, but, um, but I think we need to break this cycle uh, and, and, and then bring to be able to bring other content to the world. I think, and this is a way, this is a way to do it. I mean, this is one way because I don't want to say it's the way. This is the way we, we've chosen for sure. But what would you say to people who might say, well, isn't Twitter, isn't all the social media stuff the same as what Netflix because they're all doing the algorithm thing? What, what would be sort of the difference? Because I agree with you about the whole Netflix. I just love their content. <laughs> And I can't yes. stop. My latest thing is the Andy Warhol series. I, I just I love him. That, yeah. yeah, I I I'm more interested in him as a person than his art, to be honest. Mm. His art was a bit, but anyway, so you know, they just Yeah. I mean, I love Netflix as well. This is what I'm trying yeah. to say, but from the perspective of the creator, no, you know. Of course. Yeah. Of course. Uh, and also, yeah, I mean, anyway. Um what were we saying now? About the algorithm. Algorithm, yes. Okay, social media algorithm, yes, yes. it's an issue. Uh, so it's... Because um, you guys... But, but, yeah, but I think in this case for social media, it's like you, you create content that people would find interesting. Yeah, yeah. And then they will tell their friends or you can track people. So I guess Got it's it. true, we, 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 it's algorithm, but it's not... No one at Twitter or, Net- or Instagram is going to tell us you can't put that stuff on. Uh, yeah, and you see, that's the difference. <laughs> well, that's why I wanted to mention it because there'll be people listening to this. And I have to say, Anne Cecilia, you've given some amazing insight into what you do and how it all works. So there'll be people listening to this thinking, well, I was going to present it to Netflix. I was going to do this or I was going to just not do anything. 
So I think this is really helping to say, wait, there is a difference. This is one way to do it. This is another way. So you've explained that really well. That's and the other really thing helpful. I've heard from sales agent, but if, if you, this is just a, a small sort of insight I have on this, yeah. but uh, we're like with the master classes on distribution, tell you more about like Netflix and everything else. But um, this isn't about, about as well, like, you may want to go for uh, local TV sh channels or national TV channels because they're not doing so well and they may be more welcoming. Mm -hmm. So there are many ways to do this and you may not have to go through your sales agents for distribution. So there's other stuff that people are going to be talking about in the, because if you really, if you're an indie filmmaker or wanting to, to have this career, you need to find out the tips and tricks because otherwise well, to put it simply, you're going to be screwed over by whoever's out there, unfortunately, Absolutely. and and or have to sell your soul or you do things. So it's um, mm. so it's a way to protect yourself is gain knowledge from industry people. So that's why I mean, I'm, obviously, it sounds like I'm selling my master classes, but I I know these people and I've learned a lot. So I've learned so much from them. Yeah, please and sell it, them, sell them though. Yeah, yeah, yes. that's true. But um, they have informed my way of thinking as yeah. well. I had it a little bit, but these people, I'm like saying okay this is how it works this is you know find a way around it and make sure you you know you don't lose money when you make your film exactly and then for example uh from the, the sales agents when they're talking about how to think about distribution before you make your film right and mm -hmm. you know things like that so where do you start it's such a maze i think yes amazing stuff isn't it amazing too though that we can make a movie on our iphones Correct, yes. You can make an indie film on your iPhone. Mm -hmm. So it's just incredible. Time has moved on. The world's moved on. There's so much of a good space for creatives now out there. It's one of the reasons I wanted to do this artist in residence. I'm, I am just realizing in this late time in my life that most of my friends are artists in some way. You know, actors, mm -hmm. screenwriters, painters, I'm, you know, I don't know. It's interesting. You know what I wanted to say to you? And I, I couldn't remember the actor's name. One of my, I don't know if you remember this film. One of my favorite little shorts is a film called Subway. It's a French film. Yes, I was thinking. I know you remember, it. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. know it. It's a sort of mid-80s. So, the yeah, actor. I can't. I can't. Luke Besson, plot. Luke Besson, yeah. Luke Besson directed, and Isabel Adjani starred in with Christopher Lambert. When he was really handsome. Oh, <laughs> he was amazing. Yes, Christopher Lambert. <laughs> Just a, a comment on the side. No, but that's yes. true though. Yeah, Christopher yeah. Lambert was was very yummy in that film. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was a. It's still one of my favorite shorts. In fact, I've got it on DVD <laughs> because. I just love that film. But the only reason why I brought it up is because of shorts. You know, you don't have to have these two, three hour Hollywood blockbusters for no. them to be successful. And but you can have shorts, something like you're doing with the penis conundrum and still have a massive audience and following. That's the thing. I mean, I wanted to reach Northern because the other issue I had with not having my stuff made, I'm thinking, I'm not reaching the people I want to reach with my stories. And, and what I loved about doing it myself is only getting the audience, but getting feedback because we're going to get to know each other. We're going to make these stories. We're going to comment on posts with people. We're going to laugh with people. People are going to ask us questions. People are going to, you know, do you know what I mean? So it's, and also during the YouTube live, we're going to do this YouTube live about we're going to have a singer, we're going to have everything else, you know, ahead of the, the short film, all's going to be live on the internet. And I'm thinking this is a way to make people wait for something. Mm -hmm. So we're going to get to know each other. And I wanted to recreate, this is what I put in the thing as well. I wanted to recreate that sort of like excitement that we used to, do you remember, I remember we're like uh, waiting for Michael Jackson's thriller. Absolutely. Do you remember like I was watching, I was yes. watching, waiting on a Saturday yes. night. Like, I remember my mom and dad going up in like, what's she Yeah, we were you know? all in front of the telly waiting, yes. Waiting for that, yes. which is an excellent, amazing film with uh, video, videos actually. Yes. The, 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 the one who directed it, it was the one who directed um a werewolf in London. Yeah. And it's a it's a great actually it's just uh, it's actually Mar proper proper like a film, Mar you know. Yeah, like Martin a, um no, Landau, it, was it? No, 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 it's oh god. I, I can oh. see his face, dark hair, slim. 
I can't remember. Is it not one? No, no, no. Like yeah, not the director. I forgot his name. Oh, anyway, but, okay. Yeah, yeah. but the, the thing is, it's, it's, it was extraordinary. And I, and I think now in the age of binge watching, uh, we don't have the excitement, True. you know. Right. And I wanted to recreate the excitement. That's why I said it's going to be YouTube live. So I'm getting mm. people excited with my Aubergine videos. We're making this show that people are going to be present with the Aubergine because the Aubergine is going to take them to, to the rehearsals and everything else. And um, so by the time we get a YouTube live, people are going to be like, oh, my God, these are the people I've known for, like, whatever, yeah. and now I'm going to see it for real. Yeah. And with the TV series, I want to do something similar, but bigger. So we're then a bit bigger. So then we have the same thing, but bigger. And I, and again, I none of my other creators get that. They just put their shows on Netflix or whatever, but they don't get to see or experience yeah, it with right. people. There's no premiere. There's no, no yeah. you know, there's none of that. And now I'm going to start with the penis conundrum and I'm going to go bigger after this. And then people will be like, you know. They will exciting. know it. Exactly. You know, you bring back to mind for me, Purple Rain, and this is showing my age, but oh my God, Purple Rain. We all, my friend and I, Jabali, with somebody else, I'm going to interview Jabali Hicks, and he's a director in Hollywood, oh, a producer in Hollywood. Um, but we were outside, we were waiting, and when it was done, everybody thought they were Prince or Apollonia. You know, everybody was on the back of a some kind of uh, machine. <laughs> <laughs> a bike, a bicycle, whatever it was, you just you wore purple. You just were in the moment. You yeah. had to be there. So yes, I agree with you. The momentum's all kind of gone. I'm always aware. I don't want to sound like, and I know I do. One of these people. Oh, the olden days. Oh, but you know, it was exciting. But this is missing. This is yes. missing now. You know, yes. it's just the age of binge watching, and and I feel it. I feel like I feel like I'm missing the excitement because yeah. I know, like, because obviously I'm a filmmaker, screenwriter. I know how long it takes to mm. get something made to put on the screen. But the way we consume it, it's it's almost an insult. You know what I mean? It's just yes, like, it's like it, that. It's, it's just like we are McDonald's. All the time. Yeah, it's yeah, 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 yeah. You know, we're not like having a, a glass of wine and go, oh, this is a lovely yeah, glass know, of I, wine. I'm not... really enjoying this. No, you're not. And exactly. it's a shame because you're not actually enjoying the content the way you're supposed to. It because goes right over their heads, the attention you mean, span. You'd be looking at your phone, yeah. you know, you'd be doing all this. And you all like, oh, I stop it because I need to go to the, oh, I stop it because I remember I need to be doing this or, you know. know. And then the thing is, so if we're watching something that's rubbish, like, I don't know, like a, a reality TV show, then it doesn't matter so much, obviously, because it, it's, it's, it's fast food. Yeah. It's fast food, you know, it's yeah. fast, whatever. But if you're making, if you're watching something that's, where there's care and tension, where there's a cinematography, yes. makes you think, makes you feel stuff. Yes. You know, we need to be, go back to this. I think it's also for our own enjoyment, you know, because we I do agree. enjoy more like uh, b burgers, McDonald's, rather we'd rather have a lovely meal once in a yeah. while. We don't have yeah. to have it every day. Exactly. But once in a while, enjoy that. Exactly. I completely agree. You're preaching to the choir here. I think it's the attention span. It just goes over people's head. There was a time we used to open a CD sleeve or, or for a lot of people, LP sleeve and digest and take time and read every symbol. We talked about the metaphors. What could it mean? What does she mean by the penis conundrum? You know, we used to think about stuff and nowadays it's too quick. They'll watch but think, it. But I think there's a way, like I said, by really growing with your audience yeah. every week, commenting on stuff, then people will, I think, find that again. Because it's in I us. I hope so, yeah. I it's in so. us. I think it's in us. And yeah. I think it's just my way. Oh, the way I think we can do this <laughs> is this way. So I hope I can recreate that. Because yes. for a new generation, it will be, you know, a nice, positive. It will be quite something that would be yeah amazing for them, I think, to experience that as well. I'm I agree. And I totally well. agree. Completely agree with you. But I'm very excited for all this coming to fruition. I can't wait. I'll be in the Facebook Live, hopefully, <laughs> if my schedule's free. Um, but yes, I'll be watching it all and supporting it all. So thank you so much for joining me today. Oh, my thank goodness. You. We've, um, uh, you know, the, the first interview still up, guys. It sounds like I'm talking over and Cecile in some of it. 
But it was it was a very good conversation. I don't really want to take it down. I think mm. there was still some gems in there. Um, but I'm glad we we were able to do this. And I know you'll come back, hopefully, uh, once this is all made as well. But you see, I know the it progression. Will be. It the, will be. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. The progression. Yeah, to, to see the, the outcome of this, you know, like, because you from the start to all the way, you know. You know, it's all right. You know what I want to ask you? What did your husband say when you said you were going to write this or has he always known sort of did he have from a male perspective yeah well it, it was a bit funny and, and at first he was like okay he never said anything and then <laughs> and then he said he was talking to his colleagues before I put the teaser before everything yeah because yeah. it wasn't very clear I think for for a long time for people it was like they were, what are you trying to make and they had to see it which is normal yeah and he was like oh, I don't well um and your colleague, well, I don't really talk to them about it because I said, you're not comfortable. He said, well, I don't really know what it's about <laughs> or, you know, so it was a bit, but no, no, I think he's proud. He's always been proud of me. So I think it's fine. But I think, yeah, for a long time, he didn't really mention it because I don't think he understood the right. whole thing. Right. What's going to do. And I think it is a difficult concept unless you yeah. see the trailer and you're like, okay, now I get, I get it. it. Yeah. I get it. I get what it's about. I mean, obviously you, you it's only a snapshot, you know, it doesn't yeah. give you the wallet, but it tells you roughly what it's about. Definitely. After you watch that trailer, you know. Mm -hmm. So it was brilliantly done. I think it's just enough for mm -hmm. people to say, oh, wait, hang on. Where's the rest of it? Where's, what <laughs> happens next? What happens next? So yeah. I think you were very strategic in doing that. Brilliant. Brilliant. Thank you. So <laughs> we'll, keep, we'll keep an eye on everything and see the release and anything else that comes up guys i will put all the links to answer seals um or well everything the crowdfunding the everything <laughs> all social the Twitter, media all social media and please go and follow her please follow the penis conundrum as well the uh eggplant has its own the aubergine has its own uh, instagram it has its own twitter Mm. It ha it does lives. It mm. it does lots of different things. It does highlight. It's on highlight. It it's everywhere. The aubergine is everywhere. So go and follow it. You can't miss it. Mm. It's you know beautiful. Pink, <laughs> pink and purple. I was gonna yeah. I was gonna say yeah, it's pink and purple, but I wasn't quite sure how that would come across. <laughs> <laughs> Well, See, we're laughing about it because it's a comedy and it's funny exactly yeah and you you're funny so this is gonna be good i can't <laughs> wait thank you so much i will hopefully see you soon in my favorite city barcelona yeah i hope so anytime i know don't worry we're, we're coming <laughs> we'll be yeah. there someday soon I'll see you soon. Have a lovely afternoon. You too. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thanks so much for joining me today. Be sure to follow on all podcast platforms, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you're listening. Also, check all social media, especially the Facebook page, as there'll be new topics listed and new guests. And also, Twitter will always have the new and upcoming episodes. But make sure you subscribe so that you never miss an episode. See you soon.